Hey, mate, it's March 5th. That's my horrible Australian accent, but today we're going down under because we are joined by Jay Johnston of Our Oyster in Australia. This is RVN Live, brought to you in part by Pet Hub and GoToMeeting. <laughs> Today's program brought to you by Pet Hub. Protect your pet for pennies a day with critical contact, medical, and dietary information on a smartphone scannable ID tag. And by GoToMeeting, affordable online meetings that work so you can do more and travel less. Hey everyone, it's Courtney Wallen, and if you're watching on the stream, uh, you probably had quite a show there for the last, I don't know, five minutes. Uh, I'm joined, of course, by Andy McCaskey. That was pretty entertaining, huh? Uh, good day. <laughs> good day. Yeah, okay, that's that's my poor Australian. So we got all that out of the way, but uh, an interesting interview coming up. We do, and uh, we actually had to pre-record this interview because I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, Australia has quite a time difference from us here in Good old Indiana. I, I, it was Saturday. We taped this Friday after or fi Friday evening, uh, about five thirty here, and it, she was uh, just enjoying her morning on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, eight thirty, nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you're not familiar with our oyster, go to ouroyster.com. Check it out. It's actually uh, we've got half of them. Uh, we've got Jay joining us, and uh, James is actually over in the UK. You'll find out about that a little bit more here in the interview. Today we are joined by Jay Johnston of OurOyster.com. Really excited to talk with you today, Jade. You are joining us from Australia. We're actually pre-recording this on Friday, and it's your Saturday morning. How's Saturday treating you? <laughs> it's pretty good. It's not too early. It's about quarter to nine in the morning, so... I made sure I had an early night last night so I could do this. <laughs> well, we appreciate you taking the time out of your Saturday to, to join us. And the reason we wanted to talk to you is because uh, we found your blog among uh, one of the top blogs we should follow if we want to follow travel bloggers. And, uh, of course, that blog is OurOyster.com. Let me bring it up here. Um, really fantastic site. You guys, uh, and by you guys, you and James, have been all over the place and have had some really great adventures and why don't you just go ahead for people who haven't heard of you or checked out your blog kind of start from the beginning and tell them uh, more about you well i've been traveling pretty much non-stop for about six or seven years now we started the blog about a year ago when we were living and traveling in new zealand and now we've moved to australia so most of the content is southern hemisphere but we are bringing in content from our other travels in the past as well okay so you are i don't hear the australian accent uh <laughs> we are are you and and james from uh, the southern hemisphere or how did you end up there no i'm canadian and james is from the uk and we met in new zealand through mutual friends um but i moved to new zealand on a working holiday visa i'd met friends from new zealand when i lived in europe and i'd always always wanted to come down here i'm i'm very jealous because i feel as if we're maybe around the same age and you've done so much more than i have and um it's just fantastic to read about some of your travels um so you guys have met and and james isn't actually able to join us today because he is a in the merchant navy and so he's over in the uk training for that yeah, well, he's currently on the ship, so he works on the ship for like three, four months and then comes back and has six to eight weeks leave. So then we travel during that period and then I work work on the website and regular jobs as well. Okay, so you mentioned uh, a little bit earlier that uh, he was uh, near Saudi Arabia somewhere now, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think that's where he is. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, tell us about this uh, great adventure that you have planned that's uh, going to to really circumnavigate the continent I, I think it's gonna be pretty huge so I always I have the motto that I might never return to some place so I have to see everything basically so we're starting in in Darwin which is at the top of Australia in the Northern Territories and going all the way around the coast, which is where the majority of the Australian population lives, it's where all the cities are, back to Darwin at the top, and then we'll cut straight through the middle, through the outback, back down to Adelaide, which is in the, in the, southern, in the southern part of Australia. So that will pretty much take us everywhere. 
and I don't think I don't think I'll miss out on too much on this trip. How how many months uh, have you allocated for the trip, and then what's the trip to planning ratio? Um, it's going to take about three months to to see everything, and that's moving quite quickly. I'm usually a slow traveler, so this is going to be a little bit different for me. It's going to be moving every few days. Um, and I've been planning it since about December, January, but really started heavily planning it about two months ago. Uh, so when is the actual uh, d uh, departure date? Well, I, I currently live in Brisbane, which is in Queensland, and I fly from Brisbane on April 30th. So April 30th is the start date, and it, I will finish at the end of July. Okay. So now, uh, along the way, you've got five-star hotels, and you're just going to uh, move from uh, one to the next, right? I wish. I don't think I've ever had a trip that's included five-star hotels. <laughs> <laughs> Probably be staying in hostels most of the time. Um, there will be some camping involved in the outback, and also I'm trying to arrange um, a people mover style camper van for a section of the trip along the, the Great Ocean Road. I, that's you were talking about that a little bit, and we always like to ask the question for our travel bloggers who don't uh, natively RV, how an RV would change their experience. But you you shared with us that there might be that caravan experience, and can you kind of tell the viewers what an Australian caravan is like, or what they might expect as, when they see one that would be different? Well, the typical things in Australia and New Zealand are like big people mover vans where they've taken out the seats and installed a bed with a space underneath where you have like a cooker, a gas cooker, and maybe a, a fridge as well if you're lucky. And, and pretty much you just drive, stop, park, and just get into the back to sleep. So it's, it's quite a roughing it experience, but it, it's a really popular way to travel around in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, would they have uh, uh, built-in uh, kitchen burners, for example, or sinks, or would uh, the it would be more like a, an external uh, stove for the cooking? Usually, some will have it built in, but most of them, it's just a gas cooker. So it really is just like camping, except that you don't have a tent; you're just sleeping in the back of the van. Mm -hmm. It's not. They're not that posh. <laughs> right. Well, what what about the infrastructure? Obviously, you would have national parks and those sorts of venues. Do they have actual uh, campgrounds that are set up uh, for RVers or campers as, as separate businesses or destinations? Yeah, they do. Uh, it's really popular, especially in New Zealand. I have more experience traveling in New Zealand than Australia, and there they have what are called holiday parks, and there you can set up tents. They have cabins, but mostly it's for powered and unpowered sites for the camper vans and they're everywhere. Road tripping in this part of the world is such a popular holiday activity that the infrastructure is really well developed for it. Andy, I think that explains a lot. We've got a pretty good audience in Australia. Uh, I think that you just answered our question. We said, "Where do they come from?" I think, I think, I think we have now. Uh, obviously, you're you're extremely connected, uh, at least uh, at the moment, as far as uh, Skype's concerned. But uh, as people travel uh, throughout uh, your part of the world, uh, what sorts of choices or capabilities do they have as far as connectivity are concerned? Well, definitely it's not as good here as it is in North America. And, and as a Canadian, I do feel that pain, especially in New Zealand. Um, Australia is a bit better. You can get internet in the libraries and in some cafes. Um, but it, it is quite expensive here compared to North America for getting online, especially when you're traveling. But it's not impossible, and, and if it's important to you, you'll find a way. Yeah. So what about uh, mobile uh, phone coverage? Is that, um, uh, what, what do you expect to find? Obviously, you're going to be going through uh, populated areas, but a lot of rural areas uh, on your Australian tour. Um, well, along the coast of Australia, it should be fine because, again, that's where all the population of Australia is. But through the outback, I'm I'm not too sure <laughs> that my mobile phone coverage will be then. Not expecting much, and that's probably the 
good way to go yeah. through it. <laughs> That's part of the experience of the Outback is to kind of be isolated from everything as well. Absolutely. Hey, reading um, your blog, you talk about how you and James, um, you d when you do take trips, you kind of get the working visas and stay there a little longer. And this is a little bit more planned trip. Um, like you said, a little bit quicker than you would like. Um, but do you plan to volunteer? Because I know that's a, a big thing that you guys both do on your trips. Do you plan to volunteer a lot um, on this great Australian overland adventure? <laughs> I had to say it dramatically. <laughs> Well, this time we won't be doing too much just because we are moving so quickly. I really wanted to do it in three months. I think longer than that and I would burn out from that much travel. So we're moving a bit too quickly to do working. But I am currently working in Brisbane, so I am getting the Australian lifestyle experience as well here. Yes. Now, one of the things that, uh, well, there's really two trends that occur in the RVing here in North America. Uh, we, we've got one show called RVing for Good, which is you know, focused on people you know my age or older that are, are really going on like like mission trips and things of that nature, and then you have people of all ages that are work campers that uh, are enjoying the RV lifestyle, but they'll move from kind of one temporary assignment uh, or job to another. Do you see those same trends uh, in your part of the world? I guess a little bit. I'm of course, like with backpackers, my age group in New Zealand and Australia, one of the things that you have to do to get an extension to your visa is to do a couple months of farm work or rural agricultural work. So a lot of the things that people my age do is they'll get the camper van and then they'll travel around the like the harvest trail, going from one area to another and staying there for a few weeks to do some agricultural work and then they'll move on. Um, so that that's quite a popular way, but with the backpackers anyways. That's very neat. I like that. You do some agricultural agricultural work. It's the end of the day here for us. Sorry, it's Friday. It's I can't spit out words. I can't spit them out anyways, but uh, that's kind of neat. I like that. Um, so really interesting. I'm glad that we were able to connect with you and uh, love your blog. You guys have gotten a lot of really positive reviews on it. So keep up the good work. And uh, we cannot wait to hear about your trip. And I love that. Did you hear what she said at the beginning? She says, I don't know if I'm going to come back to where I was at. So I need to see it all. I love that. <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that's a great uh, philosophy. Now, now, one of the questions that I would have is you've really embraced this lifestyle as, as a young person. I, is this something, how long do you think you'll be able to uh, continue or Will you always have that, that uh, uh, kind of uh, wandering itch or, or is that something you think you kind of get it out of your system? I hope I'll always have the wandering itch, the travel bug. I think there's so much to explore and so much to see and you don't have to be a young person to do it. I read blogs of these other traveling families and older people who travel and I think it's so inspiring and I hope that I keep having the urge to travel. Even my mom who's in her 60s still loves traveling so I, I think I'll be, I think I'll still be traveling for a long time. Well that's a, that's a great thing and you know one of our other shows is relating to the, the hobby of geocaching which is uh, oh, yeah. certainly an international uh, pursuit and uh, I, I hope may, maybe you'll consider uh, uh, keeping in touch with us and letting us know about uh, some of the adventures and we're certainly going to be following you guys uh, on your blog. Awesome, definitely. Um, well, geocaching is something I've always been interested in doing as well. So. Yeah, we'll have to get her all. We've got a show. You just have to watch it from beginning to end, <laughs> if you can stand us for that long. But um, it, it, that'd be interesting. So if you get a, if you get a cache, make sure to take a picture and show us and tell us the story of the first cache because everyone has a good story from their first cache. Uh, hey, I wanted to ask real quick too, and I I tend to ask this question um, for someone who's young and uh, yourself being young. Um, what would you say to other young people out there that want to go and do this? I think we talked earlier today about kind of having that, that wall saying, oh, I can't do it now. I can't, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't. There's always excuses that are made, which sometimes it's not for everyone. It just really isn't. But for someone who really has the desire to do so, what would be your words of advice to just go and do it? I think a lot of people are just scared that maybe you need a lot of money to do it or you need to really plan it out and that's not the case especially if you're under 30 you can get the working holiday visas and you don't need to have a lot of money saved up to move to another country because you have the ability to work there and I think that 
you just need to just do it and once you do it the first time you'll see how easy it is and you won't be able to stop after that yeah <laughs> Uh oh, Andy! There's more encouragement coming my way. I uh, know. Uh, uh, Courtney has threatened to uh, to uh, phone in phone in late for two years, <laughs> and, and and she said, "I'll be back. I just uh, need a little bit of time off." And of, of course, I'd be working. I wouldn't just you know travel and not do anything. Uh, so, all right. Well, here's the here's the portion where you can do a shameless plug uh, about your blog, Twitter, wh wherever you are, social media wise, and how th how they can find you. Well, you can find, obviously, my blog is OurOyster.com. You can find me on Twitter. It's Our underscore Oyster. And we have a Facebook page as well, Our Oyster. Very easy to find. And, of course, if you're going to follow us, I definitely recommend you start before May 1st because that will be our great Australian overland adventure. And if you're interested in Australia and New Zealand, we've got tons of information on that. So come check us out. Fantastic. We are so excited to hear about it, and I hope uh, you'll join us again, and, and I hope James will be able to do that as well. So tell him we weren't leaving him out. It was, it was him <laughs> that didn't know. Um, thank you so much, Jade, and uh, you can go back to sleep now if you want. <laughs> Take a little kitty cat oh, nap. No, she's, all right. <laughs> she's all ready to go for the day. Hope, hope you have a great weekend. Thanks, Jade. Thanks so much. Oh, no, I hung up with her. Oh, ring her back. All right. How would you like that quick change? I, I did. I thought, you know, if you're looking for continuity errors, you just found one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think I, I think I tried to edit it out, but it look I I have so many buttons here in front of me. I hung up with Jade instead of pressing stop record, and so I had a little moment of freak out where I was like, I just hung up on her. I didn't mean to do that. So great interview. Uh, really interesting gal. Great blog. Mm. Again, ouroyster.com. Yeah. So it is always so interesting to see people how how RVs are used in different parts of the world. And I thought it was, it was kind of interesting that uh, the RVing style that they seem to have in Australia and New yeah. Zealand uh, is almost kind of a throwback to some of the van uh -huh. conversion days that we had uh, here maybe 25, uh, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It'll, it'll be really interesting to see if it or how it evolves over there um, in the next few years with fuel prices and, you know, yeah. just how it goes. You know, they they may yeah. kind of leap over. Yeah. And they may kind of, kind of leap over what we've seen uh, here in North America for uh, for the past uh, 10 or 15 years and uh, move directly into uh, yep. uh, much more um, uh, green vehicles and uh, uh, designed with fuel efficiency in mind. I could absolutely see that happen. I know we've talked about how um, China is, is, in the past few years, finally um, embraced RVing and they're at where we were at about 15 years ago however they're jumping on where with all this great technology and things so they might be the opposite where they're jumping on where we have been but now we're moving forward yeah, yeah. so interesting to see how different parts of the world uh adapt and relate to RVing and just a very very interesting young lady we had a good time with her so now it's time for 30 seconds of not so shameless plugging uh first I want to just remind you that the RVNN daily is out from last week it's it says daily but it's weekly uh comes out every friday you can check out last friday's episode or episode uh, article and then of course you've got a few days left to, to uh, subscribe for this i Friday's. have uh, maybe uh, maybe you need to hit reload there because on my page over here i've got delightfully tacky well i've got it yeah being, this is just a picture here. this is just uh, a jpeg that's, okay. yeah yep so so if, i've got the real if thing I, if over, i go over, over to over andy here. here let's see there there we go. There's the real one. With there we that. are. This is this is the this is the real deal, as real far deal. as uh, what's uh, what's up on that uh, particular site. So yes. just a way of keeping track of uh, different stories and things that uh, uh, that we are featuring and things that are related, things that we find interesting uh, as uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, this one was was also a picture. So there's lots more being pinned. But we are on Pinterest. Go to Pinterest.com forward slash rvnn of course we are on google plus as well if you just search rvnn you'll find us and we're on the roku we're in the channel store under the uh, outdoor and fitness section uh check us out and subscribe to our channel we'd really appreciate it if you gave us a little uh little review and andy uh we've been talking about uh, pet hub obviously one of our great sponsors here at rvnn here's one of the uh, qr code tags if you're not familiar with what they are we usually typically tell you about it but they've been running this great video contest and I i'm wondering um 
where these submissions are all coming from. There's so many good ones. I'm very interested and intrigued by them. So here is the actual second runner-up in the 30-second uh, category to tell you a little bit more about Pet Hub. All across the globe, pets are being lost at an alarming rate. What is ever to be done? The answer lies in customizable ID tags from PetHub.com. Here's how it works. First, you buy a custom ID tag from PetHub.com and attach it to your pet's collar. That way, if they ever do get lost, anyone with a smartphone can easily take a picture of the code, get all the information about your pet, including your contact information. PetHub. Never worry about lost pets again. There you go. Short and sweet and uh, and to the point. Did I talk over at the end there? Was no, nice no, no. Music. The audio wasn't up. You were <laughs> you were just talking to me. That's all. We were just having a little conversation there. There were some credits. <laughs> there were some credits, and, uh, and the creativity that that uh, came out of that contest is really uh, something that's pretty inspiring to see. So uh, I look forward to the next one. Absolutely. So uh, again, if you go to PetHub.com and you want to order a one or a bunch of pet tags, I know they just came out with a new one. You can receive twenty percent off with the code RVN. 20. Uh, now it's time for our RV business headlines. Yeah, and I almost uh, chimed in a little bit earlier. You were talking about uh, the influence in China. Uh, from time to time, uh, folks at RVBusiness.com will have articles and uh, news on uh, China and uh, other uh, parts of the world of RVs around the world. But uh, they focus a lot on uh, the news here in the RV capital of the world. Uh, some consumer-oriented uh, stories, though, from time to time come up. One of them, which I thought was, was quite interesting, was a Texas hospital in uh, Midland Memorial Hospital. And uh, they had a situation where uh, a husband and wife checked in, and they just parked their RV in the parking lot. Uh, they were a little bit uh, concerned uh, because the uh, security people came over. But the security people came over and said, hey, um, we have special facilities for RVers here at this hospital. Uh, so, section of the north lot where they have water and electricity hookups. Uh, and this particular uh, family, which was uh, coming from Anchorage, Alaska, uh, were traveling uh, from Pecos to another appointment in Midland. And all of a sudden, her husband needed some immediate care and, uh, in fact, was taken by, by helicopter to the hospital. Um, where he has been in the intensive care unit. And of course, it's, it's a wonderful thing that his wife is able to have the RV right there at the hospital um, and uh, can you know sleep in her own bed and have uh, uh, meals and so forth and still be close there for her husband's care. Turns out the hospital has actually offered this for uh, about 10 years. But uh, what's happened recently, they have moved uh, from two slots to five slots in that particular area. And uh, that also occurs uh, at hospitals around the country. So if you are an active uh, RVer, or particularly a full-time RVer, and you do find yourself in that situation, uh, please make sure that, uh, that you inquire. Good news in the Go RVing uh, campaign called Away, which has just uh, been launched. In fact, uh, CNN saw one of those ads uh, here this morning. But with the Great American Country Network, they have uh, launched the Ultimate Country Music RV Giveaway. Now, the sweepstake runs through April 16th. Grand prize, a 2012 Lance Ultralight 1685 travel trailer along with two VIP tickets and backstage passes to the Country Music Association Festival in Nashville coming up this June. Uh, GACTV.com promoting the sweet stakes as well as featuring Go RVing interactive banner ads and information about RVing. Uh, Go RVing is also going to have on the road guide to summer hot spots. That's going to be a special section in the June People magazine, uh, Country Edition available on newsstands nationwide, so be on the lookout uh, for that as well. Very cool. Are we, I mean, we can enter, right? I guess we can. <laughs> can we enter? We, <laughs> we can certainly enter, can. Right? Uh, that's pretty neat. That's uh, that's huge for them, and uh, it just I think that's going to reach so many more people. And those ads, and we need to, oh, we need to pull yeah. up some more of the uh, Go RVing ads because they are really, really exceptionally well done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll we'll try and feature them a little bit uh, later, uh, you know, perhaps in this week or, or or the next. Absolutely, and of course, those RV business headlines are brought to you by RVBusiness.com and the RV Business Magazine. Uh, Andy, we have a. Oops, I just I. I like to do that and switch real quick sometimes. Yeah. Uh, 
Anyways, <laughs> you do it well. I do it well. It's <laughs> completely on accident. Uh, we've got something new that we want to share with everyone here, and that's a, a new. Sh uh, is it a show? It's a. It's a show. Is that a show? Is that a channel? Yeah. Uh, is it a feature? Yeah. Is Let's it a see. bird? Is it a plane? You have a great product or RV accessory? Pull out that flip cam or smartphone and get ready for RV Travel Shop on RVNN TV. Make your own five-minute infomercial and put it in front of thousands of people who've already said, I love RVing, on a set-top box that's already in over three million homes. Maybe you have real pitchman talent. Maybe you just show people what you've got. On RV Travel Shop, people can view your product video at any time for 30 days on the Roku video player. That's the same player Netflix uses to put movies on your flat screen TV, plus videos for major channels like Disney, Hulu, Pandora, NBC, and Fox, and Angry Birds. The same low-cost player that thousands more homeowners will add to their home this week. RV Travel Shop on RVNN TV is a flat fee, month-to-month -month contract with no special codes, no order tracking, and no paperwork or commissions. Contact us now, 1-877-578-7866, or by email, rvtravelshop at rvnn.tv. I just love the Angry Birds. <laughs> just, that was so much fun to make and to, and to, to have that Angry Birds theme kind of uh, running around in the studio as we were uh, trying to pull that together. So anyway, that's RV Travel Shop. Uh, check it out and it will uh, very soon be up on the, on the Roku uh, channel itself. Courtney, what's new today? Oh, lots. It, it, very well done, I must say. You need to give yourself more credit. That's a well done video and uh, excited about RV Travel Shop. Uh, lots going on in social media today. Of course, it's always fun on Mondays because, you know, we've kind of come up after the weekend. There's a lot been posted, lots been going on. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just fun. So anyways, uh, if you find us on the interwebs, we are at facebook.com forward slash RV Newsnet on Twitter at RV Newsnet, Google Plus and Pinterest. So I kind of like to show the best of, if you will, uh, this first first one is um, from, it's a Mashable article, and it's uh, talking about traveling the world uh, in time-lapse time videos. And so if you're not able to, to travel the world, or if your passport is in the mail, or if your RV is, is on its way, uh, you can travel through these videos. There's 10 of them. I've got one right here. I'm actually going to turn down the audio just a little bit here. This is from Tahoe, Andy. Um, I was kind of showing this one to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we we're watching it a little bit. But in this Mashable article, they go on to say um, there's 10 of them featured, obviously, from New York City all the way to Moscow. Moscow. Um, but there's just hundreds of cities all over the world that, that do these time-lapse videos. And people who have most viewed New York, do you know where they're from? Where? Uh, from the Midwest. Eastern Europe. From Eastern Europe, really? Uh, yeah. Yep, uh, especially Russia. In Vancouver City, uh, that time-lapse video is most viewed by... Uh, people in Hong Kong. In, Can in Canada. I'm so in Can <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> that and, is. then, and then the U.S. prefer Las Vegas and Crater Lake. Uh, it's it's a little interesting to me because for me personally. Oh, look at the lightning. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, this this video is incredible. This is, yes. yes. Um, so many different ones. I think any of these, no matter where they're at, are going to catch your eye. Which is kind of funny, the different areas uh, who are watching what and in, in that the Canadians are watching their own and that we are too. Mm, uh, mm -hmm. But the people over in Eastern Europe are really into New York City. So this is a great article by Mashable and uh, you can check it out. Uh, we tweeted that out on uh, Friday, I believe. So just a pretty fun article there. Uh, next, our good friends at, uh, well, our good friends, Captain and Clark, were asked to join the Expedia Coast to Coast Tour, or they were the Coast to Coast team, excuse me, for the New York City uh, or New York Times Travel Show. And Andy, it, I think that they've had a little fun uh, because I've got this video, which uh, let's see here, there it is. I've got lots of videos today. Uh -huh. um, their first task was to eat their way through. New York City. Uh, so Captain and Clark, they're with the uh, Traveling Philosopher as well. You can check him out on uh, Twitter. They are eating everything in New York City. And if you aren't familiar with the New York Times Travel Show, 
Uh, this is fantastic. I've personally never been to it, but talk about everything you'd ever want to know about travel and, and see everything you want to see. This is a great place to be in. Captain and Clark were asked to go with the Expedia uh, Coast to Coast team. So I know that they were super excited. And Andy, it looks like they're having a pretty good time. I think, they, I think they are. I think they're having a great time going through uh, uh, New York City. They've got, uh, now this one, um, I think it's called, there's one called Smack. And Tawny is eating, and it's like a grilled cheese buffet. So you can put whatever uh -huh. you want, not grilled cheese, sorry, mac and cheese, called Smack. And um, this Smack down, here it is. So there they're, they're eating this macaroni and cheese that you can put whatever. So she had like a bunch of different flavors of cheese and breadcrumbs and just lots of good stuff. So. We've got that video uh, up on, well, it's up on, on YouTube, but you can find that on our Twitter and uh, just pretty fun stuff up there. So, Captain Clark, we hope that you've had a great time, and we're actually looking forward to talking to them again soon. Um, on Facebook, there is a really, really neat article, and if you remember back, we interviewed um, – Nanette Cole, who, mm -hmm. a really interesting story. We found her because she was the winner of our uh, Smart RV. And then we looked at her blog, and she is this incredible woman that's taking on this incredible trip. Uh, she's leaving here in just a couple weeks. And uh, she, is, uh, she has a Kickstarter program. And while she was looking at other Kickstarter programs, she ran across this guy here. And she said, he looks awfully familiar. It helps if I show his face here, huh? Uh, he looks awfully, awfully familiar. Find out he is a really close friend of one of her Facebook friends. His name is Josh Haley. And Andy, I don't know if you are familiar with Josh, but he is, well, she says, is accomplishing in 50 weeks what she will accomplish in five years. He is taking on 50 states in 50 weeks. 50 states. I've got he, it uh, up here on this, uh, on this IVGA here as well. Yeah. He, Maybe a little larger. There you go. Yeah, okay. And there he is. Um, so in, uh, he studied in 1999, and now he is, he's kind of started with the Occupy movement, and he was kind of one of the traveling occupiers, and that's kind of how it all came about. So he is going around asking questions to these people and just really getting through these, these 50 states in 50 weeks. So it's a really interesting story, and this is actually, this article is uh, on Backtracks, america.com it's an article that she wrote so okay. if you go ahead and check that out check him out i, I would love to have him on the show so yeah I'm, I'm just i'm just trying to, to uh, pull up his site here which is photo america yeah, p-h-o-t-a-m-e-r-i-c-a yeah yeah i'm having a little difficulty pulling that up here at the moment and so, i know uh, you can follow him on twitter at photo america as well so at okay. p-h-o-t-a-m-e-r-i-c-a you know how that Yes. This one, right? Yeah. Uh, it's harder to spell out loud. Photo with than no O. With, with, without the second O. Yep, without the second O. So, Fote America. Uh, so, really cool guy. Really interesting story. And uh, can't wait to find out more about him. And, and if you're listening, uh, I think we're going to seek you out and try to get you on here to hear about hear about your story. So, uh, that is what's going on in the world of Facebook. She uh, posted that today. But um, something else that we have been talking about as of recently, of course, is Pinterest. And, you hear me complain about how sometimes I think, oh, this is great, and it doesn't get repinned. Andy, I do have to brag, though, this weekend on my personal twi on my personal Pinterest, I had a moment of victory. One of my items got repinned to, like, 160 times. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It oh, felt yeah. good. So uh, this is something that we had a, a, a RVNN <laughs> victory. This was repinned quite a few times. Andy, uh, this is something you pinned. Can you tell us about it? It, it is. Uh, this is uh, uh, Nakalula Falls in, uh, in Alabama which is a 90-foot uh, vertical drop. Let me see if I can, can pull that up. Oops, let me get rid of my, my uh, Pinterest there. Let me, let me uh, here is a different photo, different, uh, different time, uh, time of the year. Um, this is a park that was built around uh, this, uh, uh, this waterfalls, which is a 90-foot drop coming off of here. And the Nakalula Falls Park, uh, 250 acres near Gadsden, Alabama, and over to the right here, you see the image of uh, a statue of an Indian princess who uh, supposedly, rather than being forced to marry the man she did not love, jumped over the falls to oh, her wow. death. Yes. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's a, a, nice, uh, a nice story. But uh, <laughs> this is a, a really cool area in that they have a Pioneer Village. They have a train that goes around there. And if you can believe it, I think a total of three very expert class kayakers 
actually successfully navigated the white water here off with the 90 foot drop below and uh, survived. So uh, uh, kids do not try this, uh, do not try this at home. So is there a geocache in the fall? I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Here it is uh, at the low ebb, which I thought was interesting. This is on the Wikipedia uh, side, was that uh, in extremely dry conditions, you can see uh, how large this is. So about wow. 90 feet from there down to, uh, down to the bottom, uh, wow. down here. So I feel sure that the whitewater rafter guys uh, attempted that uh, only when it was right at the spring flooding time. Yeah. And uh, absolutely knew what they were doing. But uh, anyway, very popular site apparently, and we've got all kinds of uh, people have been adding it on to yeah. uh, great outdoors, places I want to go, nature at its best, very simply, wow, places to see, favorite places, outdoors, uh, and I think there's been three more repens uh, since oh, we loaded this up. Oh, isn't that up. great, Andy? You know, I just, I have to say, oh, man, it wasn't mine, it was yours, but I'm, I'm happy Oh, but you've got you. one over here. I've got one. Now, this one I just pinned, so we, we don't have much repinning yet, uh, but this is something I pinned from Sylvia Tarnuzder, who is uh, from RVHealthy.com. We had her on the show last week. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in her recipes that she's pinning because A, they're clearly going to be RV friendly and B, they're going to be healthy. So here is what I pinned today. Uh, this is, uh, as she calls it, an amazing healthy side dish. So it's uh, you marinate sliced tomatoes with balsamic vinegar for four to six hours, uh, bake at 350 for about seven minutes until a little tender, and then... Uh, while that's going on, saute some spinach and garlic with a dash of salt and lemon juice. Put spinach on top of the tomatoes and sprinkle Why with low-fat cheese. Why do you always find these at lunchtime? Oh, I know, I know, because it's lunchtime. This is what I'm looking <laughs> for. So anyways, ta-da, delicious. And she calls this muffin top friendly. And if you're not familiar with what a muffin top is, uh, women deal with it. And uh, maybe some men too, I don't know. But uh, So a great little RV healthy recipe from uh, someone who would know, know best. Yeah, that it's I, actually it's called Dunlop disease. <laughs> Done lopped over the belt. Done lopped over the belt. <laughs> so that's the, okay. the, the male version. Well, moving on. Yes. Uh, moving on. Uh, well, let's see what we're uh, going to be post. Oh, actually, moving on now. It's the travel app of the day. And um, I, I, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> should I tell the story, Andy, or just play no, it off? No, just, uh, just jump right in play here. Play it off. Four-star right. review. Four-star review. Uh, this is uh, today's travel app. It is called I Exit. Andy, I'll have to pull do you have it up on yours? I do. Okay, I do I'm going to flip over to you. Sorry. Uh, let's see here. I exit. It is a $1.99 download, and uh, it's pretty neat because what this is going to do, Andy, how many times have you taken a road trip with your family, and you don't really know what's going on at the exit, yeah, or you've yeah. got some picky eaters in the car? You guys never had picky eaters, did you? Uh, no. You said this is what you're <laughs> no, having that, in your that was No, that wasn't the problem. <laughs> so uh, what it does is it, it, in real time, now, note you must be connected to the internet or have some uh, connectivity there mm -hmm. um real time what's coming up next at exit 123 121 you've got the restaurants uh, what's available so if you've got someone who's really picky and let's say only wants chick-fil-a or won't eat much more than subway or wendy's or whatever it may be uh -huh. you can find out what exit those are at and i actually had a re review that i pulled from an rver that they said they love it when they travel to use this when they travel in their RV, uh, they know uh, where the rest stops are um, because they have dogs. So oh, yeah. This is really important yeah, for them. Sure. Um, and they need diesel um, for their trucks and RVs. So uh, great info for them, and they found this really practical and useful. So I thought that was another reason to show this. It's a very it, simple app, but yeah, it's the other helpful. thing that's nice is is that it's uh, showing you you know it drops a pin and shows you that uh, yes okay uh, there there is a Popeyes chicken there. But uh, you you uh, have to go uh, two point nine miles down oh, the road to find it. Isn't that the worst? Yes, when they're like, yes. you see the Panda Express that you've just oh you're craving, and it's right. at this exit, and then you, where is the Panda Express? Again? Right. Find once it. you get once you get off, you you, uh, you have only a part of your of your journey. Yes. And then the other thing is you can see what uh, um, uh, what's what's coming up because you always have this thing. Well, 
you know, do we want to uh, grab a, a burger here and come to find out there's a sit-down restaurant, uh, only two exits up. Yep. But you don't know that because yep. you don't know the uh, particular area. Yeah. So it looks like a great app. Yeah. So and what was the price point? A dollar. It's a dollar ninety nine download. And here's the great thing about it, people. I'm not being uh, biased here. It is also for Droid. So if you have an iOS or a Droid device, you're in luck. This is the app for you. So a dollar ninety nine. I think that'll save you some. Uh, some battles maybe in the car. It will. It will indeed. <laughs> so uh, shows that we are going to be uh, releasing uh, today and this week. Uh, we've we've been teasing that we were we are going to have brand new shows of uh, Tales from the Road, What's Wrong with This Picture, Geocaching World, Gadgetplex, lots of good stuff coming up, and we're recording a lot of those this week. So be on the lookout. Be sure to subscribe to those shows so that you are alerted when they are uh, posted. Yep, that's so, right. Uh, lots of good stuff there. And actually, let's take a, a real quick break. We need to talk about uh, some meetings that we're going to have we this week. We need to talk about GoToMeeting. Uh, GoToMeeting is the number one app for having online meetings where you can bring people in from across the state, across the city, or across the country, or across the world, and have them share with you in a business meeting online. It's one low monthly fee, and for that, you can meet as often as you wish for as long as you need to. And when you add in HD faces and the ability to, for people to join in from their phone or from their, uh, uh, from their iPad uh, or, or iPhone, uh, you've got a great package. We use it here. You can find out more. Go to gotomeeting.com. Click on the Try It Free button. Make sure you use the code PODCAST, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, when you sign up. Go to Meeting, affordable meetings made easy. Very good. You're getting real good at that. We're all getting good at these, aren't we? We've had, have, I've had GoToMeeting uh, as, a, as a sponsor in some of the previous shows for, uh, geez, six, seven years, I guess. And I've used it for that long. It's a yeah. great product. He's great product. A not only a believer, but a user. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Recording this week, of course, tomorrow evening, we'll be recording Geocaching World with Mr. Head Hard Hat. And just a, to a little tease as well, uh, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, the 13th, we are going to have a uh, Cub Scout troop in here. So uh, bring your kids along uh, for that show. It'll be a lot of fun. That'll be the 13th, uh, same time. And this Wednesday, Andy, we've got a very special guest on live, and these are the McNavigators. I don't and know about McNavigators. The McNavigators, they're going to be joining us on Wednesday. This is uh, Dan and Joanne. They are actually uh, in the process of purchasing an RV, mm -hmm. but their whole thing is um, living a meaningful life, uh, doing a lot of things that they have a really neat background, really neat story. I won't say any more because we're going to be joined by them and we'll, we'll hear it firsthand, but that should be a great show. That's coming up on Wednesday right here on live. Of course, it'll be live at noon Eastern, but then streamed until four. Uh, so tell a friend and uh, join us. But now we've got uh, something else. Oh, well, that's right. Time for Geocache Radar. The Geocache Radar, episode GCRD 110-1. Today's cache is near Woonsocket, Rhode Island. While in the area, you could go to the Stony Brook Wildlife Sanctuary, which is an extensive boardwalk system that allows you to follow along the edge of Teal Marsh for a great view of turtles, fish, muskrats, and great blue herons. Or head to Purgatory Chasm State Reservation, a unique natural landmark. Purgatory Chasm runs for a quarter of a mile between granite walls that rise as high as 70 feet popular with picnickers and rock climbers alike, believed to have originated in the sudden release of dammed up glacial meltwater at the end of the last ice age 14,000 years ago. Or the Museum of Work and Culture, one of the best examples in the U.S. of a predominantly French-speaking city. From the 1880s to the 1920s, men, women, and children from Quebec came to the valley, leaving unsustainable family farms for factory work at the region's booming mill towns. All within easy driving distance of today's cache, the difficulty of three, a train of 1.5, called Wheel Bug. Today's cache is GC300K1. Wheel bugs are camouflaged, very shy, but they're one of the largest terrestrial true bugs. Wheel or cog shaped armor, up to an inch and a half long. Wheel bugs are beneficial insects, but they can inflict a painful bite if handled carelessly. It's a 16 ribbon favorite. Approximate coordinates, north 41 degrees, 59 minutes, west 71 degrees, 29 minutes. For full details, go to geocaching.com, the official global GPS geocache hunt site. Show notes on the cache, go to rvnewsnet.com forward slash geocache radar. 
Information is believed to be valid at the time of production, but conditions may change. Use common sense and caution and do not trespass. Keep geocaching a fun and family RV activity. Geocache Radar is a production of RV News Net and RVN TV and is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Of course, that's in the uh, the general Boston uh, area, and there's all kinds of, of history and uh, all kinds of things to do around there. So that would be a really great place to spend, uh, you know, a week, a uh, week or more, uh, just exploring that uh, particular area and having fun uh, geocaching uh, along the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. I think that's all we have for today's show. And um, if you're going to be joining us uh, tomorrow evening for Geocaching World, uh, we'd love to see your pictures. So, of course, you can send us a geocache at rvnn.tv. Still time to uh, submit those. And we, we like to show those on the show. It's uh, fun to yeah. see. We know that people are geocaching. Uh, we like to see the crazy geocaching that you're doing. And last week we featured a lot of that. You can go to our website to find out uh, or watch that show. There's just a lot of crazy people out there doing crazy there, things. There, <laughs> there are, but having fun as, oh, they, yes. as they go. Hey, thanks for joining us here on RVNN Live. Uh, we will see you on Wednesday. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of